Hey everybody, welcome back to Tinnitus Lab. So today we have another guest with us, uh, Michael. Why don't you say a few words about yourself? Uh, introduce yourself to uh, to the crowd. Yes, hello Anthony. Hello everyone. As stated, uh, I'm 46, living in Poland entire life, mm, and I'm here to to talk a bit about experience with and I suppose also the experience with lab uh, device okay um all right so <clears throat> first things first you know this is not going to be a really long interview because uh the last one was was uh, kind of <laughs> kind of massive so i'm going to keep the questions uh, like short and concise just so that you know everybody gets to know a little bit about your experience right so uh let's actually talk a little bit about your tinnitus case yeah so how you got tinnitus um, and what was like your experience after you got it, what you felt, uh, you know, and what, you know, various things you tried as a treatment, for example, well, before the Susan Shore device. Yeah. Tinnitus journey started 10 years ago. Actually, the first onset was in 1997 after, uh, which then tinnitus lasted for around a month. It was, uh, subsiding, uh, Gradually, until I didn't notice it anymore. And then after a year, and I forgot about the first initial ons uh, onset. And then I made a made a mistake. And uh, in in which is ten years ago, I went to a metal gig without any hearing protection. Actually, it was not the first time I I attended a metal gig without hearing protection. I just my level of of uh, understanding of tinnitus and hearing problems was. Uh, close to zero, since I never had any problems with my hearing before. Well, I, I had this one onset, as I'd explained, in 1997, but then it subsided quickly and I forgot about it. Mm -hmm. And yes, indeed, 2015, I wasn't uh, wearing any hearing protection. And that's how it started, basically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, the mental state was uh, starting with... Uh, Actually, at, at first I stayed calm because I, I thought that it's impossible that uh, the sound which is heard only in my head would stay forever with me. But then when I started to, and, and I didn't really panic much, I went to a general practitioner, I went to a, a ENT, uh, I, was, uh, I was reassured that things should improve for me, so I didn't even uh, take any steroids, any, any treatments at first. Mm -hmm. And then I started to study in the in the internet uh, various tinnitus cases, and when I realized it may but may not um, vanish during the during the times uh, along the years, I started to panic. Uh, actually, I I had very bad episode with um, being in the hospital for mental health problems uh, was, uh, was because like, of tinnitus. Yeah. So it was it was very very bad at first. Okay, well, um, let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, how everything led up uh, to your device usage, your experience using the device, uh, and also, I'm pretty sure that a lot of people are interested, um, are you somatic? First question, yeah, are you somatic? Um, second mm -hmm. question is, um, were you on any meds, for example, yes, throughout the treatment or before? Did they help you? Yeah, sure. So still pointing back to the to the history, my resilience to tinnitus gradually along the years started to improve. So I started to be more and more resistant to it, meaning that I was coping with it much better. And basically, I decided to try whatever is very available on the market, legal, illegal, or whatever, whatever it takes to to try to um, improve my condition. So I went through Lanier, I went through transcranial direct current stimulation, TRT maskers, and uh, Basically, whatever you can think you about uh, try, available tried things. That are basically, yeah. Yeah, I tried. Basically, I tried everything, and then, um, obviously, as uh, most of us uh, probably, I got to know about Susan Short device and uh, the, the clinical trials that she held, and then I stumbled across uh, uh, Timitus Lab video on YouTube. So actually, that's how I <laughs> yeah. I learned that, or maybe one of my peers uh, texted me with, with it. You know that. Uh, gossips uh, emerge quickly in the community yeah, so yeah, i don't yeah. remember exactly how i got to know about about it but i found it on the on the um, your channel 
and uh, yes i am somatic it's not very intense but i can increase my tinnitus may uh, increase my tinnitus by tensing my neck mm-hmm. or clenching my jaw mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but it's or not like really I, really strong it's like maybe like a tiny little bit yeah it is a tiny little bit i would say it increases by 20 30 percent if i uh, especially if i push uh, the forehead with my uh, palm and uh, try to tense strongly then it's the most yeah so that's a, that's I, a I strong uh, cervical that's a strong cervical modulation you know a lot of people think that it's actually the forehead <laughs> but uh, you know there there's a lot of there lots a lot of tension going on in the cervical regions when that's when that's done okay uh and regarding the question about any medications uh you said you tried everything does that include some meds like benzos and stuff like that as well it's okay if you're not comfortable answering it we can skip the question if you want Oh, it's fine, Anthony. I can I can reveal and uh, benzos. I never tried. I, well, actually, I had an episode of one month using clonazepam, which was advised by. I was inspired by uh, Dirk the Reader, which was advocating uh, for using some uh, mix of uh, of medications. Yeah, the gabapentin so and the clonazepam combo. Exactly, but then clonazepam was not working well for me. I mean, the level of anxiety increased after I started to take it. Oh. So luckily, pretty fast, I decided to to quit it to uh, tap it off, which after a month was not bad. I mean, I went easily back to the state prior to the to usage of benzos. But then I I took um I was uh, then consulted by the clinic of uh, Hamid. Uh, I don't remember the share name right now. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. And then it was like three years ago when I started a mix of cocktail of of drugs, which, which was fluoxetine and doxepin and uh, pregabalin. So mm-hmm. I've been taking it since uh, 2022, I would say, until now. Uh, it helps. It helped me to some extent, uh, meaning to it helped me to to manage my anxiety, level of stress. I managed to to function prof- in, the, in the professional, social, so and uh, family you life on a, on, a, on a you know like on an emotional level, right? It helped me on an emotional level, maybe even a little bit, like 10%, 15%, the loudness. And I, I think the fluctuation of tinnitus, uh, so like bad days and, and good days, uh, these uh, ups and downs uh, were much less. So it was uh, a bit more stable on, on one predictable level, I would say. Okay, well, we're not here to talk about uh, Hamid, but uh, as we can see, his, uh, his, his maybe course of meds can help some people in a psychological manner. Okay, now let's move on to the device, um, <clears throat> the juicy part. Yes, uh, so let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, so how was your experience using the device? Um, you know, did you experience any reductions? Uh, and if you did, uh, you know, how much was it? And uh, do you think it was placebo or an actual real uh, reduction? Sure. Uh, so as you as you mentioned or as as we identified, I have a somatic component which is related to the cervical spine, uh, cervical part of the neck uh, tension, which elevates the tinnitus uh, the, the most. So mm-hmm. that's how I started my treatment six weeks ago uh, with stimulation of uh, neck together with the sound. Yeah, that's mm, so neck, my... neck electrode placement, yes. yes. Neck electro placement. Yeah, yeah. And okay. uh, first one, two days, I experienced a spike, uh, which uh, threatened me a, a little bit. Well, I, I tried to remain calm since, you know, with an experience of 10 years of tinnitus, we, we get ups and downs, so it's not unusual to have uh, some bad days. So actually, I, I have no clue if it was related to the um, initiation of usage of the device or was it a coincidence? I have no clue. But uh, I was after the first or second day even hesitant to to move on. But then uh, I decided anyway uh, to proceed. And then it subsided. And then as of, uh, I think the biggest, and I I did notice an improvement. uh, That's what I have to admit. Uh, The biggest improvement was between second and the third week of the treatment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... um, that's where uh, the spikes were much less frequent and uh, in case there was no apparent reason to elevate my tinnitus i didn't get bad days so actually 
how I how I measure it. Uh, I usually on a bad days use maskers, in ear maskers, uh, like the. Right, yeah. I don't know if it's a part of the app or no, but it helps me cope. Yeah. So yeah, I noticed yeah, that during the treatment, during the treatment, I stopped using not entirely, but um, let's say formerly I was using the maskers three four uh, days a week. Now it was only one, two days. In the end of the treatment, it was only one day, maybe in a week when I had to use maskers to, to go through the day. Mm -hmm. So actually this is the way I, I, I measure the improvement. Um, I, think, I think it's around 40, 50% uh, versus what was prior to the treatment. So I still still have tinnitus. It's not completely gone, but I would say today is a very good day. I have one on 10, maybe one and a half on 10, one out of 10 which yeah. is absolutely manageable, uh, ignorable. And uh, before the treatment, I would say my tinnitus fluctuated between three and five. So now it's usually between one and three, one on a very good day like today, three on a bad day. So I would say current bad days are equivalent to my former good days. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the level of improvement I, I noticed. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the extent when I use uh, in-ear maskers is like really once a week, maybe on a particularly bad day. So the quality uh, of life improved significantly, as I understand, yeah? Yes, it did. Look, it's only six weeks of the treatment, right? So yeah, yeah, I'm looking it, it forward how it improve, uh, how it, uh, it can definitely improve even further after six weeks. Yes, um, as has actually been shown uh, by some other by some other participants, and I believe Susan, in the recent Q and A, confirmed herself that, that you know you can continue using it and it will uh, continue improving. And so, okay, Michael. Uh, I'm very glad for you know to have the opportunity to talk to you. Uh, I'm very happy that you uh, didn't disappear <laughs> like many of the you know many of the participants did, and that you agreed yeah. to participate in this interview. I'm sure many people will be very interested in hearing about your case, uh, especially considering the fact that you're not super somatic and you know you were also taking some meds as well. You know, lots of people were really scared that like you know meds and you know some other stuff like masking can completely destroy the treatment and as we can see from your case that's not always uh, doesn't always happen yeah um, and you know I'm really happy that uh, your quality of life has improved very significantly and uh, you know it just brings me a lot of joy to know that uh, Susan Shore's work is is really really kind of showing itself um, already you know in, in real world applications not only thanks to of course the project from Tinnitus Labs but also the DIY, uh, other DIY projects as well, you know, giving the opportunity for people to use this treatment. Um, so I think that's going to be it uh, for today. Again, thank you, Michael. And uh, I'm thank you for actually looking me. forward to hearing from even further improvement <laughs> post six weeks. Maybe we can get the tinnitus down you. even further to uh, zero, <laughs> hopefully. Would be awesome. Okay, then. All right. And, thank uh, you. And for everybody listening, uh, if you're interested in discussing Tinnitus, you can go ahead and join the Discord channel uh, in the description. The link is in the description and in the comments. So that's it for today.